Let me tell you a little bit about Mike. Mike Robertson's favorite sense isn't sight or hearing, it's wonder. He's devoted his life to finding less traveled roads, boxes to think outside of which I need, and inspiration in the most unlikely places. Author of four books, not one, but four, musician, storyteller, husband, and father. Mike speaks to help others find their own technicolor lives. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Are you ready? Yes. yes. If you're ready for me to start talking, I'm asking if you're ready for your moment. No. Let's <laughs> <laughs> be honest. That moment when the spotlight swings around and picks you out in the crowd, and all of a sudden you're called upon to do something amazing. Are you ready for that moment? Yes. That's what we want to talk about today. There's a story I heard when I was still in college, which is back when humans first learned to walk upright. <laughs> I was going to say first learn to walk erect, but Truman, uh, Trevor gets very excited when I say that. So, uh, <laughs> humans were just walking upright when I heard this story, but it stuck with me for many, many years because it's such a good story and it involves one of my favorite bands of all time, The Who. Do you know The Who? Yeah, yeah. This is this picture, that's rock and roll right there. <laughs> the Who had just recorded a new album, and so they were going to do a North American tour to promote this album. They weren't yet at the superstar level they would eventually rise to, so it was very important this tour do well. The second night of the tour there in San Francisco at the Cow Palace, packed auditorium, the Who comes out and they begin to play some of their hits. Talking about my generation and uh, Pinball Wizard and things like that. And they get about three songs into the set when it becomes very clear something is wrong with the drummer. The drummer for The Who was a legendary crazy man named Keith Moon. Keith Moon would do anything for a laugh. He would do anything on a dare. He would ingest anything that was put into his hands. And on this night, someone had put into his hands some elephant tranquilizer. Oh, wow. And he had ingested it. And so three songs into the set, Keith Moon is drumming along, and all of a sudden his eyes roll up in the top of his head, and he tumbles unconscious off the drum stool. Well, everything comes to a halt, of course. The roadies come out and they grab him under the arms and drag him off stage into a dressing room, throw him in the shower, and they run cold water on him for 30 minutes while the audience just sits out there. Finally, after 30 minutes, he says, I'm okay, I'm all right, I'm good. So, dry him off, the who comes back out on stage. Now it's time to start that new album. It's so important that everything go well. And they begin playing again and less than a minute into the song. The exact same thing happens. His eyes roll up, he falls unconscious off the drum stool. And at that point, the, the guy who wrote all the songs for the Who, the guitarist, Pete Townsend, is so disgusted with Keith Moon that he walks up to the microphone and he says, Can anybody play the drums? I mean, somebody good. In the audience, there's a 19-year-old kid named Scott Halpin. Scott Halpin's there with a friend. His friend starts elbowing him and says, Scott, raise your hand. So Scott Halpin is a drummer. So he looks around and raises his hand and says, I do. The roadies zero in on him, grab him, lift him up out of the audience, onto the stage, lead him over to the drum kit. Pete Townsend comes over and says, watch me. I'll give you the cues. And so in 60 seconds, this kid is plucked out of the audience and comes up and plays the rest of the concert with one of the greatest rock bands of all time. What a story that is! What an amazing thing! When I read it, I was so jealous of Scott Halpin. <laughs> I'm not even a drummer. I was 19, though, when I read it, I thought, why can't something like that happen to me? Do you know how many Beach Boys concerts I've gone to? <laughs> Just waiting for them to say, Brian Wilson has a sore throat today. Can anybody do the high parts? And I would go, <laughs> It hasn't happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm ready. And that's what I mean when I say, are you ready? Are you ready for a moment like that? Well, how could you be? You think Scott Halpin went to the concert that night and said, maybe Keith Moon will collapse and I'll get to play with him? <laughs> no. These moments don't announce themselves in advance. 
They come all of a sudden, and you've got to make a split-second decision. How can you be ready for your life to change in a moment's time? The most loved, most watched movie of all time is The Wizard of Oz. You remember the story of The Wizard of Oz. It's about a young girl growing up in flat, dry, dusty, sepia-toned Kansas. You ever been to sepia-toned Kansas? Nobody has time to listen to her troubles. Only her little dog. She runs away from home. That doesn't work out. She runs back home, and she arrives the same moment as a horrifying tornado. And she goes back in the farmhouse. Everybody else she knows is in the storm cellar, and they can't hear her pounding on the door. She goes in the farmhouse. The farmhouse is picked up by the tornado, whirled around and around and around, and boom, drops with a horrifying thud. And Dorothy, not sure what's going on, makes her way tentatively to the front door of that little farmhouse. And she reaches out and she grabs the doorknob and she opens the door and all of a sudden she's in a whole different world. A world with talking trees and flying monkeys and good witches and bad witches. She's in a world of technicolor. Do you remember that moment in that movie? My experience, my first couple of experiences with the Wizard of Oz may be different from yours. Because as I said, I'm very, very old. <laughs> I go back before Netflix streaming. <laughs> I go back before renting a VHS at Blockbuster for the weekend. See, when I was a kid, you had one chance a year to see The Wizard of Oz. CBS would show it once a year between Thanksgiving and Christmas, often on a Sunday night. And so, three, four, five years in a row, I'm on the living room floor of our house with my chin in my hands, staring at the TV, just watching The Wizard of Oz. And I remember so well that moment when the farmhouse landed and Dorothy makes her tentative way to the door and she reaches out and she opens that door. And did I mention we had a black and white TV? <laughs> yeah, that's what I saw. <laughs> but here's the thing. I still thought she was in a magical, wonderful place. I didn't realize there was more to the story. When Dorothy and her three new friends get their first glimpse of the Emerald City across the poppy field, I saw that and I thought, I want to go there. That looks wonderful. That looks magical. I want to go there. And I didn't even realize that I wasn't seeing the whole picture. I wasn't seeing the technicolor version. And I realized that's how most people live their lives. They go through their lives saying, yeah, it's, it's good. It has its ups and downs, but it's fine. And they get to the end and they say, I thought it would be more exciting than this. They don't realize they're living the black and white version of their life, and they could turn on the technicolor. See, sadly, most people go through their lives just doing this, reacting to what happens. They are sitting in the bleachers, spectators in their own life, watching it go by and saying, huh, I thought it would be more fun, more exciting. I decided early on I didn't want to go through life reacting. I decided I would rather go through life creating the life that I want. Creating a life, not a black and white life, no, a, a life with some, some color in it, some action, some drama, some magic, some movie moments. And so that's how I have lived my life. And I have a formula, a simple three-step process I want to share with you to help you identify those moments and how you can make better for yourself. That's the question I ask you when I say, are you ready? Now, you remember 19-year-old Scott Halpin sitting in the audience? He's the only one who stood up and said, I'm ready. But think about it from the other side. 12,952 people were not ready. And I think the odds are much the same today. For every person who says, I want everything my life can give me, there are thousands who say, I'm just going to coast to the finish line. It's just okay. I don't want to live like that. And so I want to teach you how to live in a state of readiness. Because you know what? If you live ready, you don't have to get ready. You're there. You're already set. And if you're ready and you're set, the only thing you have to do is just get up and go. <laughs> Are you ready? 